All right, welcome back everybody to my channel. Today I am taking a break from making bags. Special announcement about that coming soon. Getting a little bit of fatigue, so what do we do? What do we crocheters do? We pick up some yarn and we start to crochet a project. So I picked up this camera and I thought, okay, what video can I make for you guys next? What I wanted to do today is to give you guys an idea of how to combine one hank of really expensive hand dyed yarn and one big box store yarn to make it last. So I figured that'd be a nice idea to show you. And a lot of you have always been asking me about the fisherman wool. The problem with me sometimes is I have too many ideas and then I start one and then I change it and I want to do something else. So that's what's been happening. And when that happens for me, I just put everything to the side and I move on with something new. So this is great. I'm getting to use the fisherman wool and I'm going to be using this sock, which is from Sock Obsessions Yarn. And it is a nice a moss green with it definitely has like a flex of rainbow in there it's really really cool so anyways hopefully you enjoy this idea this video i'm literally making this up as i go but the idea for today is to create a scarf that combines a big box store yarn and a hand dyed yarn so you can get the bang for your buck so sit back, relax, give this video a like if you enjoy it, and don't forget to subscribe. So to start off, I, I already did, because I really don't know, I'm just literally making it up as I go. I just made a collar of my desired length. So I kind of like mine a little bit snug, but not too much. So that's the perfect size for me. So I'm gonna make my first row out of the hand dyed yarn. And the reason why I like this, fisherman wool is great to with combining with hand dyed yarns because one it is 100% wool so you have a wool if I'm not mistaken right pure virgin wool containing natural oils 465 yards which is plenty if you want you can actually do a sweater with just two of these and one of these I'll show you guys that in another video I think that's a good idea uh, yeah the great thing is it's wool wool merino wool with a little bit of nylon so you get it's in the same family so it won't look too weird the different types of fibers so I'm getting a nice earthy tone woods moment, like snowy woodsy moment. And so what I'm feeling when I look at this is um, basket wheat, thick textures. So I'm no, I think I want to create a thick textured cowl, and I think I want the thin yarn to have thick texture because the idea today is to maximize this one hank of yarn. This is one hank, so about 420 yards. I am using a 4.5 millimeter hook. This is from Likey. Okay, so I swatched ahead, guys, and this is what I did. So I added four stitches to in between each section. So from this part that's sticking up to this one, there's four half double crochet. And after you do that, I just did three rows of half double crochet. One, two, three. And I started my basket weave after that because I, I wanted it to really stick out from the yarn so that's why I started it with half double crochet. Basket weave is one, two, three. I'm gonna make it, it's four rows wide each section. They'll be actual squares so it'll probably be four by four. Just bringing you guys in so far. Look at how the colors playing out. It's like little flecks of, it's like tweed. It almost looks like rainbow tweed. Update, so I added, I finished my basket weave and I did two, one row of just half double crochet after the basket weave. I have one row of fisherman wool, half double crochet, and I'm going to be doing my uh, peekaboo little rosebud um, technique with the green. So it's going to be fisherman wool in the background and little beads of the green car, uh, colorway. Watched ahead to see how this would turn up and I really, really like it. I did this in another previous cowl. And essentially what this is, is three half double crochets in between, which you can see here, one, two, three. And then, there we, where is it? there we go, one, two, three, and then you have the bead. And this is just um, triple yarn over bead stitch, three half double crochets, one, two, three, triple yarn over bead stitch, one, two, three, triple yarn over bead stitch. And if you can see here, I am pulling my green yarn through with the fisherman wool. So as you crochet with the fisherman wool, you're just bringing along the green in it. One, two, three, right now I'm about to switch into the green, do my triple yarn over, and then you have, the way you can tell is there should be two stitches on the side of these beads. So one right there, one right there. One, two, three, then you put the bead in, one, two, Three, put the bead in. Sh sh shabuya, look at how this turned out, guys. 
look at that guys and you can really control like you can follow what i did but um essentially what i try to do is i just try to space them out so that's all up to you but yeah guys check that out it's coming out beautifully i'm going to close this off with one row of half double crochet to balance it out and then i'm going to think about what i'm going to do next i might do another row of basket weave this looks pretty cool so just repeat it I might repeat it. This is what I've done so far after completing the second section of basket weave. So now I just have to add another section of the fisherman wool. And then if you pull it forward, that's what it kind of looks like. It can turn into this shape. So I definitely want to make it a little bit bigger. Given that, I probably will just do alternating rows just to give it some height. All right, so real quick, before I forget to mention it, I decreased after every second, um, so the cables that are going uh, vertical, up and down, I decreased that last stitch with the first one. So then total, you should have decreased by like eight stitches. Uh, I just did that so it could be a little bit snug since it is snug here on the bottom. Uh, I want the shape to be a little bit uniform. Now at this point, I'm going to be alternating between both yards, which I still haven't cut. Everything is still in one piece. I will be alternating half double crochets of each one. to give you guys all an update i got my coffee and finishing the last row of this cowl let's get that in that natural light look at that look at how that green just pops out boom so i'm finishing it off with this i decided to finish it off with the tan because since i started with the tan i kind of want to finish with the tan but look at the shape of this this is a perfect length for me it's going to be nice and chunky when i wear it so and i don't want to go too high as well because uh, when it comes to keeping it high, I might as well just make the infinity scarf to wrap around twice. I don't like to make these too tall. If I do want it to come all the way up, then I do the wrap around twice style. So it's nice and simple, guys. All it is is three different stitches, half double crochet, basket weave, and triple yarn over bead stitch. This is just half double crochet alternating the color. Three rows of half double crochet, and I'm finishing with one row of half double crochet basket weave and the basket weave remembers four by four all of the squares except for the when you finish it here you get two of them and here it's three spaces in between and then coffee bean or bead triple yarn over stitch i have that much yarn left over of the hand dyed yarn which is still pretty decent look at that fits in my hand and then i still have this much of tweed so i can actually make i'm thinking of making either some gloves and a beanie but I want to make the beanie first, so let's go ahead and make the beanie. I'll see you guys like my bag. I'm creating a shop of handmade bags soon, so watch out for that special announcement. Hello, good morning everybody. Welcome, 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 as Gary from Urban Yard would say. <laughs> so it is the next day. I had to take a breather from this because I was crocheting for more than like six hours straight. But anyways, I completed the cowl. Check it out in the natural lighting. Look at how that yarn just pops in the vibrant, the natural lighting. So, so cool. And you can wear this either with the collar, with the ribbing up or down, however you want. I decided to make a matching beanie with it. So this is the beanie right now. And I wanted to show you before I continue on. I did the same thing as we did in the cowl, four by four basket weave stitch for four rows. So there's four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Then I alternated yarns here, each one only being half double crochet. I didn't do it here in these first two, but since this is my last row for the fingering, I only wanted to do it three times. On this third one, I decreased after every ninth stitch. So on the 10th stitch, pretty much combining stitches 10 and 11, I decreased, so. Uh, that'll give you a nice snug look because it is a bigger yarn and it'll keep the integrity in the shape of a hat I'm gonna do one more section of basket weave four by four up here or actually I might just use the rest of the green 
to close it up decreasing after every my preferred method is decreasing after every third stitch when i decrease my hat all right so i'm bringing you guys back i am now doing this is what it's looking like and i just did a couple rows of what i was talking about decreasing after after the third stitch until you're done you start getting this nice shape of the head and the way i base it off of is that when i put it on if it lands here, kind of like on the crown of my head, that's where I would stop and start to decrease. That all depends on how low you want it. And I want my hat to be just right at my eyebrow. So that's how I measure. And if you need to, instead of the third stitch, you can start decreasing after the second stitch if you see that it's starting to get too big. So like right now, this is actually starting to get too big because you do want to get that feeling of like being able to stretch your hat a little bit down whenever you put it on. So I'm going to start decreasing after the second stitch to start closing it up. That way you get a better snug look. That's a little tip for you guys. Look, check it out guys. It is coming out so much. Check it out. Look at that. It's so beautiful, so nice. You see that? Look at that. Oh, look at how the light just bounces off of it. So I did one, two, uh, one, two, three rows decreasing on after the third, and then I did one, two, three rows decreasing after the second, and now I'm about to do one more row decreasing after the second, and then I'm closing it up. Now what I do when I close it up, is I will measure just, you know, half the length of the hat because I think that's enough yarn to thread it through. So about three quarters if you want to be safe. I'm going to pull it through. So I just finished my last row, okay? And then, oh, let me cut this other yarn. All right, and then what I do is I alternate between every other stitch. So I skip the first stitch. I put my hook through the second. And then I'm going to pull the yarn all the way through. Skip one stitch, hook in the second, pull the yarn through. Uh, we'll pull it through to the inside of the hat. Okay, and the reason for that is that way when you pull it in, it closes in on the inside. Now here, you just have to, the more you do it, the better you get at it of pulling the yarn and then tightening the knot so that way the hole here in the middle doesn't open up. You just get better at that. The more often you make up. Test out the hat, guys. Look. Ah, it's so nice. Kind of looks like a beret. <laughs> Shabuya. Oh, yeah. Very nice. See? And then you can pull it a little bit because you know it has that a little bit of elasticity. Perfectly snug fit. Check that out. And I still have some leftover, so I can use this for a heel, for some socks, for some other leftover yarn. But for right now... Yeah, guys, this is how you can make the bit most out of your yarn. I mean, I can actually make some gloves with this, mixing with, with the fisherman wool, but that'll be for another video. But for right now, check it out. You got two items. Testing, testing. One, two. It is super cold outside. And this is keeping me warm. So far, so good, guys. Check it out. Oh, look at the sky. It's so nice, right? Oh, it is cold. It is time to get some wingy wing. Okay, closing notes. This was a very interesting and ultimately it ended on a positive note because I ended up with two garments, my hat and a cow, with enough to make some fingerless gloves or, you know, I can use this for the heel and the toe of a sock. Hopefully, with this video, I was able to inspire you to see that even if you can only afford one hank of, you know, expensive hand-dyed yarn, you combine it with some big box store yarns, you can create magic. So don't be discouraged, and hopefully I can encourage you to actually just, you know, if you saw that one hank of yarn, now you know, you can make it go a long way. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this and enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can see more. Do other types of videos, such as unboxings, tutorials, vlogs, styles, and and also the live watch-alongs of TV shows and movies while we crochet. I also have a yarn podcast called Limon Talks, and I will have, my next guest will be Smells Like Yarn, and yes, if you guys enjoy his channel and stuff, I will see you guys on Monday evening for 
Limon Talks, a special episode with Roth. Thank you so much to all the members of the Limon Crochet channel. You guys make this experience so much fun and you give help me give lots of purpose to and direction of what I'm doing on this channel. So thank you so much for your support. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. But I would like to give a special shout out to our Inner Circle and Influencer members. So let's start off with our Limon Inner Circle. Quick shout outs to Cocktails and Crochet with Coco. We also have Karen Miller in the house. And let's not forget our influencers, Araceli Pintado, Noemi Torres, and Blanca Valtierrez. Thank you so much, everyone. And you were, we have such a great time in the live. I will also be making an announcement on my official bags. So if you would like to save my Etsy shop, I will leave that in the description box below. My first update will be soon. So hopefully you guys enjoy what I'm doing. It is just something extra to help support my law school endeavors and it's just an easy way for me to a creative it's a, it's a creative outlet for me to to give you guys something you guys can own made by me by my hands and who knows maybe it'll turn into something bigger so if you guys support this yarn this um uh, if you guys support my project bag endeavor we shall see how far we can take it but yeah thank you so much and i'll see you guys in the next video